Welcome to the Elite Podcast Network, home of the number one independent wrestling coverage, available on iTunes, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow us on Twitter at Elite Podcast Net and join the revolution now. over this today over Skits because Skits is at the Dodger game watching them losing right now to the Washington Nationals, which I'm disappointed in. But joining me now, I got my man from the NYC. He's he's probably shaking his boots because the Toronto Blue Jays are catching up to the New York Yankees. Mr. Tom, what's going on, mate? Not much, not much. It's uh, definitely a busy weekend as far as... uh baseball and wrestling was concerned. I mean, it's it's already tough because I've been, you know, staying up and watching the G1 Climaxes live at 5.30 in the morning. You know, during the week I'll watch it because that's like the time I get up for work around there. So I'll watch it for a little bit and go to work. But on the weekend it's so tough because you just want to like sleep in. But, you know, it's all for the G1. It's all for wrestling. And uh, I didn't... We'll get to the other uh, the other happenings, the the big pay per view that happened yesterday, which I, I'm sure you have a lot of more thoughts on than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to all that, but first, I want to start off something. I'm gonna get off my chest for a second. Sunday morning, I woke up, and then I uh, ended up listening to another podcast. So I just like. Just to check it out, uh, under some interview that happened, was taped a few weeks ago. So I listened to the Wrestling Guys podcast, and then uh, this one dude named The Butcher thinks he was funny, calling us, you know, dickheads, you know, wrestling heads, dickheads. So I was like, ah, uh-huh, very cute. So, so and then he says he called, he's calling us out. So I'm thinking, ha, huh, that's funny. Because first of all, Butcher, you know, thank you for calling us dickheads. Just just to say, you know, me and Skits have a dickhead, not like you, Mr. Butcher. Secondly, man, who the fuck are you have the right to call out somebody? First of all, the show you're in is called The Wrestling Guy Podcast. You are not the wrestling guy. You're co-host or whatever. Your friend, David Gomez, he is the wrestling guy, all right? So basically, it's his show. You're just his little psychic, all right? You could come out there with your tag-looking glasses and thinking you're fucking something. But, you know, what's funny is that you guys started your podcast. No disrespect, David, but you guys started your podcast at the same time as Taz did. But Taz's podcast is probably more successful than you guys. But then you come out wearing your tag, tag glasses thinking your podcast will be successful like him, which, good luck. I'll give you props, though. You guys got Lufesto on your show. And uh, you're working on some other guys that you guys that we never had and you guys had. But just letting you know, Mr. Busher, you don't have no right to call out nobody. If someone's going to call out somebody from the rest of the guys' podcast, it'll be David Gomez. And he's definitely doing a good job. And I was happy to see him yesterday. So, Butchie, that's a little shoot on you. So you don't want to mess with us. I'm just going to just let you know that. Don't mess with us, motherfucker. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Man, yeah, going, rant, ranting early, ranting early here on this Monday night. I mean, like, yeah, like, why is he, like, why is he calling us out? Like, like, randomly, 
like, like just randomly calling us dickheads, like, yo, you're, you're funny. You're a funny guy. You know what? It's, it's funny. funny. It, guys, he's, I, he's just a psychic. He's just a psychic. This, you're not my psychic. It's, it's not like, okay, this is the after show, and you're my, you're, you're just like my little, my little psychic. You know, it's, it's nothing like that. We're all just all equal here in wrestling heads. So, people, you're listening, go ahead, tweet it. Just go ahead and tweet it. Just say Oscar sh- shot back at Butcher. Uh, or let the wrestling guy know I did that. Just tweet it at wrestling guy HP. Let him know I did that shit. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, Please do so. A, do it. Jerry, I know you're listening. Do it. Do it. I don't give a fuck. He ain't going to do nothing to me anyways. And, um... David, if you're listening, we're still waiting for our joint show, so I'm I'm waiting for you. You might have Deshaun Two Cents coming up, which I uh, sorry if I'm spoiling it, but what about us, man? We're just waiting. All right, all right. Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Tom, what are you thought of Monday Night Raw tonight, dude? I thought it was okay. I mean, there was some there were some good matches. But there was a lot of a lot of dull points. Uh, you know, I, I I say it each and every week, and I'm gonna keep saying it. It, it Raw could be a good show or a bad show, but either way, it's always tough to watch because it's three hours every week. And I know most like wrestling pay per views is like three hours, I would say, but a weekly TV show should not be three hours. You know, when when I watch the G1, each G1 show is roughly about three hours, but it doesn't feel like that. They also have a, a 15 to 30 minute break for intermission during the whole thing, so you can kind of like cool off. You don't get that during Raw. You get commercial breaks every five minutes. It's just like but overall, I thought it was a uh, okay show. You know, some good, some bad. Yeah, I mean, I thought this show was uh, was okay. Not, not, it didn't suck. It wasn't like one of the best Raws. But I give up. Okay, even though I hate the Seahawks, because I'm a Rams fan, we're gonna kick, they're gonna kick their asses week one anyways. Um, all you Seattle fans out there, I'll give you guys props. You guys. The whole show. I'm telling you, you guys did a good job out there. I give you guys props. Anybody from Seattle listening, my hats off to you guys. Even though I hate your fucking football team, the Seattle Seahawks. Like I said, they're losing Week One to the Rams. <laughs> good job, you guys. Good job. Good job. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, and also for all you Seattle fans, I hope the Clippers move over there. Seriously, we don't want them here, even though they're a good team. <laughs> By the way, um, Raw. Let's go with Raw. Uh, Raw started off with um, Seth Rollins coming out once again, bragging about how he broke Cena's nose, and um, he mentioned that Cena was not there, but he will be at tough enough tomorrow. So he's just trying to say why well, he's not tough enough to be here tonight. So basically, he's out there making fun of John Cena, and he um, and he supposedly he heard that Cena was in the building. And then they showed the time trial. It was John Cena, a picture of John Cena's broken nose. And with a mouth moving, somebody's making fun. It's probably, it sounded like Seth Rollins shot MK Cena. And then uh, basically he just pretty much made fun of Cena the whole time. And then um, I, I want to say Triple H came out. And he mentioned that, um, that Cena is now 50-50 to compete at SummerSlam due to the broken nose and all that stuff. And then... Um, Oh, yeah, before Triple H came out, Cesaro came out, wanted a title shot. And then um, Kevin Owens came out and saying he deserved a title shot. And then Randy Orton came out. That's when Triple H came out and said about the 50 50 thing. But we must have a, a WWE title match tonight because he, Seth Rollins said he's a fighting champion. He did open, he had an open uh, challenge last week. But then Seth Rollins wanted to defend the title, but Triple H made him defend the title today. So what he did, did was. He set up a triple threat match later on tonight that will be Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, and Cesaro. And the winner of that match will take on Seth Rollins later on, or the main event, for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Um, before we move on, I want to ask you something, Tom. Triple H now says John Cena could be 
Um, my question to you is, if John Cena can't go, what would you do? Like, how can you fix this? Who, who, who can you replace him with? Like, can you, can, will you put a Randy Orton, Cesaro, or possibly even Sting? Like, who, who will you, what will you do? Um, I mean, I, I, I think Cena's coming back, but hypothetically speaking, if I was going to do this, I would, because I feel like Orton is doing his thing with Sheamus, so I wouldn't do that, and plus we saw that fucking match tonight, so I wouldn't do that. I would make, I would make a triple threat match between Rollins, Cesaro, and Kevin Owens for the title at SummerSlam if, uh, if Cena couldn't come back. That's what I would do because it keeps the Cesaro, Kevin Owens storyline going. Uh, you know, it's a it's a big time title match. You have you know three great wrestlers in there. It would be you know a a great match. So that's what I would do. Yeah, I mean, uh, if I knew back then, I mean, I probably would have the same thing. If if I would have done like you know, or maybe a four way. Um, like if, if I have to change it right now, but if I knew a few weeks ago when John Cena broke his nose, then I would have choose either possibly the Dean Ambrose or Sting because if you on SmackDown, Dean Ambrose came out and helped out Cesar, which makes no sense because um, Kevin Owens and, and um, Rollins attacked Cesar, but then it makes sense how what Dean Ambrose has to come out and save Cesaro because, because he's feuding with the Wyatt family. Why is he coming out to there? So I was thinking maybe they want to replace Cena with Dean Ambrose for another Dean Ambrose step the match and put Sting with with Roman Reigns because the rumor has it Sting was supposed to team up with those guys to take on the Wyatt family, but then Eric Rowan is injured. So I thought maybe we put them or you bring in Sting to be with Seth Rollins but obviously, Sting is, you know, you're not going to have Sting walk out with the WWE title just to put in a match against um, um, Rollins just for one night and that year ago. So, um, and basically have Sting, Sting go Owen to it in the WWE. <laughs> but um, but now, I mean, now the way it looks like, I probably would have done a triple threat or, or maybe a four-way match at SummerSlam for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I mean... Or put another Randy Orton, because, because you know, there is talk of Sheamus has an injury, too. So you could put Randy Orton against um, Seth Rollins. I know all your people are saying, oh, yeah, God, not again. Well, the fuck? This is not going to be the main event of SummerSlam. Brock Lesnar and Undertaker are going to be the main event. He might as well put another fucking Seth Rollins at Randy Orton match. So, I mean, that's going to be my direction, but... We'll see what happens the next few. Hopefully, we find out an answer in the next few days, because I don't. It'll be disappointing if John Cena, or the, the, from the WWE announcement, John Cena will not compete on the night of SummerSlam. That we, that I think that'll be retarded. So they have to make a decision now, or if, if Cena thinks he could go or whatever. You better tell John Cena. I don't know. I know they're in a post this point all, but you better tell me, hey, are you ready to go or not? Because I feel like they could promote it better if if they can put a new match in there. Because right now, there's not there's not enough confirmed matches. Like, John... Look, look Kevin Owens and Cesaro match is not confirmed yet. But it looks like they're going that way. But they could change it to a WWE title match, you know? So they better do something. Because SummerSlam is just around the corner. So they got to do something. All right. Um, first match of the night, which I want to say it was... Uh, I believe it was... The the tag team match, New Day and Los Mataros, I'm not mistaken. I believe so. I think that's what, I think that's the first match. Yeah. All right. Um, Unless, yeah. did the Divas come before that? And I, I was always thinking of that or the the tag match, but um. Let's, uh, regardless, let's, we'll talk about the tag match and then we'll go on to the Divas match. Okay, let's, let's talk about the tag match. 
the tag match, New Day going against Los Matadores. Um, another match where which to see who gets a title shot. Not it was not a normal contender match, but I guess who gets to earn a title shot for the past WWE Tag Team Championships. Those kind of things you've been seeing on Raw the last couple of weeks. Um, you, I mean, it, then, this match was all right. I give a props a little. I know Skip doesn't like to give props to Matadores, but they made it a little interesting in a way. And so is Kofi. Big E, he's a big dude, but you know, it just feels like. When those Matadores and Kofi are in there, it just seems like this is what wrestling should be today. Guys playing around, like the whole, almost like the whole roster should be like that. And Big E, I feel like he was out of place. He's a big dude. But I like the finish, though, when the, with the, you know, Big E finisher with Kofi jumping off. It was, that was pretty cool. And yet, Torito, her trying, um, um, Xavier was outside, but then, you know, he had one of the Matadores helping him out with a drop kick. And, um, yeah, the, the New Day won the match. And then afterwards, they were, they were backstage with Renee Young. Renee Young, uh, told them that, uh, you had, you guys have a, a match, to, uh, tomorrow. I mean, on SummerSlam, you, it'd be you guys, it pretty much announced to be a four way match. It would be the Time Town Players, the Fender Tag House against New Day, Lucha Dragons, and Los Matoros, who they beat. Um, because that's going to be the the match at SummerSlam for the WWE Tag Team Titles. New Day didn't like it, but they said they're going to uh, somehow, some way, walk out with the Tag Team Champions. Um, then they started clapping. New Day rocked. Renee, they kind of made Renee Young join them doing it. <laughs> so, um, Tom, what you thought of that match? I thought it was okay. You know, it was kind of just like a typical Raw Tag Team match. You know, nothing... Nothing out of the ordinary, uh, but I'm still going to praise New Day. I, they're so damn entertaining, week in and week out. One of the most entertaining acts right now in WWE. Just their entrance alone is, is entertaining, seeing Big E and Kofi's clap each week. So entertaining. Um, but the match was fine. Um, the post-match stuff with Renee was was hilarious. Um and it definitely, you know, it, it sets up uh, definitely some intriguing stuff to happen at SummerSlam with it now being a four-way match. Um, yeah, it mixes things up just a little bit, you know. I mean, we've kind of seen it before, but, uh, you know, at least it's, it's something different. But you you got to put the titles on New Day. you got to put the titles back on New Day uh, come SummerSlam. There's no, primetime players aren't doing anything with those titles. The New Day's act is a thousand times better than what the primetime players are doing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I totally agree. You have to put the titles on, uh, on New Day. You know, it's too early to make some of predictions. Maybe we'll do that next week. But, um, yeah, I feel like... The new day have to walk out WWE Tag Team Champions. They have all the momentum and you know, heels. Uh, this, it really makes no sense to have time. I mean, I almost call them crime time. Crime time players <laughs> uh, walking out Tag Team Champions at um, at SummerSlam. It wouldn't make sense for Los Matadores or the Lucha Dragons to walk out of those titles either. But you gotta give a new day. They got all the momentum, and um, I could see them competing with the prime time players continuing. Maybe prime time try to get the tag belts back at Night of Champions, but we'll see. <laughs> All right. Um, next match, which I believe was a Divas match, which was um, Team Bad against um, Team Bella. Um, there's, there's one spot that I give the Seattle props on this one. They chanted, we want Sasha while... while um, well, um, Na- Naomi was in the ring, and then she tagged Sa- Sa- Sasha. did like a couple of stops, and she, she tagged back, and the fans were like booing a little bit when they did that. And then I there was that chat and Sasha's ratchet. No, she's not. First time you hear that on Raw instead of NXT. And then uh, let me see. I try to remember some couples. They, they, they gave these girls a once again plus tr- ten plus minutes in this match. Um, and then they won the match. It was, I believe, was uh, the 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 fellas that won the match. If I'm not mistaken, um, Bree was doing the 
doing the little Daniel Bryan thing. Um, the fans were, going, I mean, you know, um, the, the fans were like, you know, how you can say they're following her, you know, with the whole, the whole Daniel Bryan thing. And then, um, yeah, they got the victory. And then uh, it was an okay match, not the best. But, um, yeah, and then once again, it looks like the fucking Bellas are baby faces again. I don't know what the fuck they're doing in the last few months. Heel faces, heel faces. Make up your fucking mind. Um, so, Tom, what you thought about that Divas match? Yeah, you know, it was it was fine. You know, there were, you know, it's 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 tough because Brie Bella got I think more time than like Alicia Fox and Nikki, and she's like the weaker out of uh, out of Team Bella. Um, but it was it it was fine, you know. It was uh, I thought it it was actually going to be worse, so it was a little bit better than I expected. Um, you know, there was some good brawling at the end. Uh, so it was, like I said, it was fine for what it was. It was okay, nothing too great, nothing to write home about, but it wasn't terrible. You know, there was a couple of sloppy moments in the match, but nothing where you're just kind of like groaning and, uh, you know, smacking yourself in the face because it's that horrible. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's just to keep up momentum for uh for SummerSlam, which uh you know the match was officially announced tonight that it's gonna be a three team elimination match, you know, Team Bella, Team Bad and uh whatever. Did they did they ever say uh the new name for Charlotte, Becky Lynch and um Paige? Yeah, um, it's uh, I think it's the P P B C. Do you think P B C? Yeah, uh, yeah, oh yeah, you're right. It's team uh, Team T C B. A lot better than the uh, submission. What was it? The 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 submission squad or something like that, where they had uh, they had Brazzers and all the all the porn companies tweeting at WWE thanking them. For the uh, the traffic influx from uh, from what happened last week, so we were talking. I know we were talking about that last week, where it was like, do these people pay attention to what they're naming their teams and what they put on TV? So I guess you know, PCB is it's better than a uh, than a poor name, but um, yeah, you know, divas. They, I think they only got uh, you know one match tonight. You know, for the past couple of weeks, they've been uh, they've been having like two two matches, I would say, per show. So tonight they only had one, but it was still fine either way. You know, the match went a decent amount of time. I think it went ten plus minutes. So, uh, you know, like I said, nothing nothing too great, but it, it could have been worse. So I'll, I'll take it. Yes, yeah, sweet. Um, I, I know they had another. Um... Well, they had a video package of Charlotte and um, talking like Ronda Rousey, how she is doing women, and she wants to do the same thing. And I think she mentioned that hopefully one day WrestleMania can end with a with a Divas match. Like a Divas match can main event a WrestleMania, just like how you know now women matches are in main event in and um and and in the UFC, but uh, it's. If she wants to try to have a women's match or main event WrestleMania, um, I wish her good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, if, if, they, if WWE ever does that, holy shit. I'm not going to say that's impossible, but who knows? You know, WrestleMania main events have ended with, um, with a, I mean, many, many with tag team matches, single matches, triple threats, four ways. I mean, you never know. Steel cage match. But if it ended with a women's match, um, hey, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's uh, it's impossible, but I mean, it would be crazy if they ever done, never did that. So, um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right, um, let me see next match. Uh, next match, I believe. I think it really went on the triple threat match. I believe because I believe the, the triple threat match was the. It went on the at, at the end of the first hour. I, I, it was a triple damage. Was I mistaken? Am I right? 
Yeah, you're right. All right. The triple threat match with uh, Cesaro, um, I always call him Kid, but Kevin Owens and um, and Randy Orton. Uh, it was it started off pretty good. I mean, um, a couple of things I like, like when when Owens went outside, Cesaro went outside, and he tried to back off, and and uh, Randy Orton came on the other side, and he clotheslined him. I like that. Um, it it was okay. It's almost like something I saw before, but in a, in a tag match, but they put in a triple threat match. I like the ending, though, that with how they made it look like Owens was going to sneak out and win the match. But then Orton came out, RKO, um, um, Kevin Owens, right, like right after he lift up, um, Cesaro did the, the pop-up powerbomb. He RKO uh, Owens, then he RKO Cesaro afterwards. But then uh, Randy Orton got the victory. And he's now no contender, or he can say he advances to wrestle Jeff Rollins later on tonight for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship on um, the main event. Um, but which was which which is um, which is not bad, I guess. They put uh, Randy Orton in there. So um, Tom, what you thought about that match? I thought the match was good. Uh, there were some good spots in there, like you mentioned. Uh, you know, each guy got, uh, you know, got their time to shine during the match. Each guy kind of looked strong uh, throughout the thing. Uh, you know, the double RKO at the end was kind of cool. Um, I I didn't think that Orton was going to win. I thought Cesaro was going to win, leading to a Cesaro-Rollins main event, and then Owens interferes and, you know, costs them the match. but. I was wrong on that, but match was still good, you know, kept the Owen Cesaro feud going. And you know what? It makes them it still kinda makes them look like top guys either way. You know, because they're fighting with Randy Orton, who's a top guy, to see, you know, like who's the best. So uh we'll just have to see what happens with Cesaro and Owens, you know what's going to happen with them as far as SummerSlam and what's going to happen with them going forward. Because that's the thing that definitely worries me is, <coughs> excuse me, going forward, you know, where is Cesaro and Kevin Owens going to kind of fit into the mix? Where do they go from here? That's obviously some of the biggest questions. But, you know, we got to do, the only thing we can do is just uh, be patient and, wait and see what happens, but triple threat match, pretty good. Um, yeah, there's really nothing else much to say about it. Orton. Okay. Uh, I, I will say Orton, he definitely plays to the crowd so good, and it's something that I'll mention once in a while because I think people, like, people get on Orton's case about a lot of things, but he plays to the crowd so good. I mean, he was getting them, like, fired up at different points in the match. And uh, just by his, uh, you know, his charisma and all that, while a guy like Cesaro, like, he'll do a move that'll pop the crowd, but Orton will, you know, like, raise his hands up or something like that and get the crowd going. So uh, some good stuff there. And Owens, uh, he's such a great heel. Uh I loved how he talked about that all the fans, uh, that the fans printed out all the Cesaro section signs, um, which, if you know, there was a thread on Reddit's uh, squared circle about people doing that, about printing out those Cesaro section signs and handing them out. So that was definitely good, definitely healing it up to the uh, to the Internet crowd. So. Very uh, good stuff from all three guys. Like I said, they're they're all looking pretty good right now. All right, um, we got two callers um, calling in. Let me put up one of them. Six five one, Eric Cole. You're live on Wrestling Heads. Who this? Hey, what's up, guys? This is Nathan calling from Eyes on the Ring. Hey, what's going on, Nathan? How you doing? Uh, not too bad. Just figured I'd call in and shoot the shit since, uh, Eyes on the Ring wasn't live last night for whatever reason. Um, yeah. So I figured I'd get my time in if it's okay with you guys. 
Yeah, it's cool. I mean, maybe we could talk uh, AAA later on, even though, you know, there's a lot of complaints about it. But I know you watched the show, and I did, too. So I, I did, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, hold on. Let me put this other person on. One second. 916 Area Code. You're live on Wrestling. Who's speaking? How's it going, guys? It's uh, it's Matthew. My name's Matthew. Hey, what's going on, Matthew? Um, no, I just want to comment on Raw. <clears throat> Definitely enjoying your guys' show so far, but uh, I just wanted to share my thoughts. Um, I, I thought Raw was... Uh, I, I would have given it a 4 out of 10 if I had to give it, you know, a number. I, I think what I think is a big problem, and it's been for years, and I'm sure people are tired of hearing of it, but um, I think there's this huge lack of depthness in the mid-card storyline. There's no real angles anymore, no real no real storylines. You just kind of get random feuds with with no story behind it. Um, and I think that really hurts uh, the interest in these mid-card storylines. Um, and like I said, it's, it's been it's been like that for years. Uh, so first off, what are your guys' thoughts on that? And do you, do you kind of agree? Um, uh, yeah, I remember one point, like, like 15 years ago, everybody had a storyline, even freaking like right. Crash Holly and then had a storyline from back in the Attitude Era. Um, <clears throat> it's just, now that I feel like they're trying to go that route, like now they got something for Wade Barrett, which we'll discuss later yeah. on. Yeah. Um, I think the roster is more, is more, I think the more, another problem is people don't realize the roster is bigger than it was in the Attitude Era, if you guys realize that. Ever since they had, um, they brought in WCW and ECW one, they brought in more guys in, and then it's hard to fill up a storyline for all those those um, wrestlers in that one roster, you know? So yeah, and I, I feel uh, like they continue on, even, even passing the whole invasion angle, they still continue on with that, um, that freaking... Yeah. Um, I mean that 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 system. I mean, and I think it's kind of dumb, you know. I also think that there's obviously the comp- lack of competition, um, especially coming off of you know the Attitude Era. Uh, they were still in that mode of going you know full full throttle, and I think that without without competition, without another wrestling company going head to head, naturally they I just think that they don't have to and. Um, that's why you kind of get like a, it kind of feels like a repeat, you know, like you look at uh, the tag team division and I actually do feel like there's more talented wrestlers on the roster than there was in the Attitude Era, but um, you're just looking at the rosters now um, and more specifically the tag team division, um, it's just like repetitive, you know, no no story like I said. Um, and just to kind of touch on that Orton uh, match real quick, I, I mean, I thought it was a good match and I, I understand why they went with Randy um, you know, as as the winner, I, they wanted an established main event um, star in that final match. Um, but I would have loved to see Kevin Steen in that match. I think that uh, WWE is just way overdue in pushing new main eventers um, and new faces. I think Kevin Steen could be that lovable anti-hero that people just love to cheer and they can't boo. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll definitely see. But, yeah, I just wanted to say I love the show, guys, and share my thoughts. Yeah, it's cool. Hey, you know what? But the whole Kevin Owens thing not get, getting a shot. Hey, I'm not. I won't be. I mean, I won't. I won't complain if um, somehow that match got replaced at SummerSlam with Rollins defending the title against Owens and Cesaro. Because I wouldn't not complain if um, Owens is the winner tonight. If they go in that direction, so we'll see. We'll see how uh, John Cena's injury goes. By let's yeah. hope you have an update in the next couple of days and say, okay, John Cena's out then. They could promote this match a little better, and not the last minute thing. And uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting, you know. Yeah. All right, take care, guys. Thank you. All right, thanks for calling again. You guys from Sacramento, right? All right. All right, take care, man. You know what? I kind of agree with that. What the caller was saying, in a way, because if like today, like if you look at the Attitude Era, like everybody had a purpose, like he said, but like. If you look at today, unless you're like a Randy Orton, a John Cena, or somebody that they want to push, then you really don't matter in the grand scheme. Yeah, of and it, it, it's definitely been that way for a while. And I will say, though, they are getting better with putting storylines for mid card guys and not. Because I, I, I can remember a period, I would say like 2009 to like 
up until maybe like 2013 where it was just like just the main eventers getting storylines and everybody else, yeah, they would have matches, but it would be based on something pretty uh, pretty ridiculous or incomprehensible, just, just something that didn't make sense. But, uh, you know, it, it is getting better as far as storylines go and kind of utilizing the mid-card guys. Um, it's not to the point of where the Attitude Era was. I had, and, and a big reason that so many people, like when you look at the Attitude Era, and everybody was involved in a storyline. A big part of that was Vince Russo. You know, you watch a, a bunch of shoot interviews, and everybody says that Vince Russo was the guy who told Vince McMahon, like, we need a storyline for everybody. So that, that was probably one of the only positives that Vince Russo did in wrestling. But, um, yeah, like I said, it is getting better. But it, what, uh, another main problem is that when we do get mid-card storyline feuds, there's a 50-50 chance it's either going to be a good storyline, but then the other half of the time, it's completely fucking stupid. Like, this whole Rusev, Dolph Ziggler storyline going on, nobody gives a shit. Even though the Rusev flag tonight was great, and Summer Rae putting the uh, the accolade on Lana was definitely great. Um, that was terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was that was bad. No, it was less. It was great. It was great for uh, for different reasons. But you know, it's just like when you get these mid card storylines, you're like, all right, what kind of ridiculous thing is it going is it, it going to be? What kind of ridiculous angle are, gonna, are they going to try and go with? Instead of going with like, there's so many classic. I think wrestling storylines and so many classic wrestling angles that you could still use today for the mid card guys, but they just don't want to do that. And, and he was definitely, and you know, it's definitely right that Vince really just, he, he puts the focus on, you know, the main event scene and John Cena. So if John Cena is not in the main event scene. He's still going to be spotlighted. And if he's in the main event scene, he's going to be the only spotlight. So that's that's definitely a, a a big problem. But like I said, it, yeah, at least it's getting better. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. Uh, let me see. We just did the triple threat match happen. Um, the the once again. Uh, let me make this. Uh, let me let me make this. They announced next week on Raw that um, both Undertaker and Brock Lesnar is going to be there. And Mr. Nathan, I believe you're heading to that show, right? Yes, I will be. Me and Joe will be at that show. So chances are I won't be able to call in next week. I feel you. I will uh, be at that show. Yeah, you're going to be lucky too. You're going to see both Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. And we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll see another Brock. Well, on the last, uh, was that a Raw that I was at? It was when they announced the end of an era Hell in a Cell match that happened at WrestleMania 28. So I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. Well, it seems like next week's summer, uh, next week will be pretty interesting now uh, that both Undertaker and Brock Lesnar will be there. And that's Brock Lesnar's hometown, so anything can happen. <laughs> um, also, um, Let's see what also happened. Uh, I'm trying to think what else happened. Um, I mean, I, and I know the event happened. I, 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 I want to get I want to get this out of the way. I know it happened later in the show, but the whole Stephen Amell thing that happened, obviously. So it was Barrett, uh, King Barrett, whatever. Uh, versus Neville tonight, and, you know, they had a match, and Stardust came out and attacked Stephen Amell, and he, of course, jumped the railing. Like, like people were people were surprised that the guy was just sitting at ringside and being mentioned, like, every, every 20 minutes, and he wasn't going to be involved in something. Like, of course. Um, but then they're backstage, and Stephen Amell is with security, and they're talking to Triple H, and Neville's there too. And Stephen Amell told Triple H that he wants, you know, that yeah, what the 
he, you know, attacked, he got attacked that even though he's an actor, you know, he's a man still, and if somebody puts his hands on him, he's going to, you know, retaliate. And, and then Neville suggested that they do Neville and Stephen Amell versus King Barrett and Sardis at SummerSlam, and Triple H kind of laughed it off and said, you know, you don't belong here, you're an actor. So Stephen Amell said, you know what? I'll have my lawyers, you know, take care of everything. There's going to be, you know, no lawsuit, no nothing if you do the match at SummerSlam. So Triple H said something about by 9 a.m. tomorrow, um, you know, have the papers ready from your lawyers and you'll have the match at SummerSlam. So basically it's going to happen. I don't know why they had to throw that little quip in there, but so basically SummerSlam is going to be Neville and Stephen Amell taking on uh, King Barrett and Stardust, which I didn't see coming. I didn't see them making it a tag match. I figured they were just going to throw Stephen Amell in Neville's corner. But what do you guys think of the whole thing involving a celebrity into a match at SummerSlam? Well, I'll start off saying that I was wrong, but I can tell you this, though. I don't think Stephen Amell will get... um, Involved too much, he might might wear his uh, his, his, um, his green arrow. I'll uh, say that's a so like a wrestling gear, but um, but like I said, I don't see him getting too vol- involved in this match. I see arrow mostly. Sorry, mostly um, Neville and um, well, you can add Jared and um, Stardust in there as part of the. I mean, getting taking all the bumps and stuff. But I don't see. Steven taking any um, bumps at all. I wouldn't be surprised. He gets the victory. He gets the pinfall on Stardust. Um, but having Wade Barrett involved, I mean, kind of weird in a way. Like, it's never it's never been, like, in a – he's never been part of the storyline the whole time. But it just seems like they just want to have a tag match and say, all right, let's just add uh, Wade Barrett in there, you know? So, um, yeah, we'll see Typical creative has nothing for you scenario when it comes to Wade Barrett, by the way. Yeah, pretty much. I I have this very funny feeling. I could be wrong, but I feel like Stephen Amell is going to pin Barrett. Like, Neville's going to hit the red arrow on Barrett. and Or maybe Stardust, but I just have a feeling they're going to do it to Barrett. And then Stephen Amell is going to do something, and Barrett's going to take the pin. Uh, it, it, it could go either way with Sardis or Barrett, but I just have this funny feeling they're just like completely, completely done with Barrett. He looks like I he's... feel like you're wrong, but I have a feeling that you're going to be right because, and if that happens, Wade Barrett is basically done after that. They've tre- they've turned that guy into a joke. Yeah, from the Nexus leader to a freaking joke, but I still. Feel that Steven could get the pin on Stardust. It will make more sense if he gets the pin on Stardust more than uh, Barrett, because you know this whole rivalry was based on you know was the Arrow against Stardust, and now you have the the Arrow, you know the the Red Arrow against Stardust, and he finally got an ally. That's way Barrett. You know it, it would not make sense at all if Barrett, if Barrett got pinned. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, and uh, but it goes next week, and let's see if Steven appears next week, and uh, yeah, see what happens. All right, um, we're trying to see what else happened. They, they they did have a video package thing about the Undertaker and uh, Brock Lesnar as um, all the the current and legendary guys like Steve Austin giving out their comments about the the match, and. Um, one guy says Undertaker's going to get destroyed. Then JBL thinks Undertaker's going to win. It's a must-win for Undertaker. I just thought that the package was pretty cool. And um, I, I think right now, or it could be over to WD Network that they're showing this little thing behind the brow between the Undertaker and um, Brock. I hope it goes back way back with um, the time when the Undertaker was doing the yeah. Brock Lesnar again. Yes, I was at that Unforgiven, which it ended in a draw. I was up at Unforgiven. <laughs> and, 
Yeah, it, from there to WrestleMania and to now, they showed that whole thing in that in that uh, program show network, which I haven't seen yet. But we'll see. All right. Um, let me try to see what else interesting happened on Raw. Um, Luke, Luke Harper versus Dean Ambrose. Yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty cool. I mean, it was not the best, but it, it had a, a shitty ending, though, right? Like, um, did it Bray got involved, and then it, and then uh, those two guys, uh, you know, were from not two guys, but Roman got in, and then, and then uh, basically that's pretty much how it ended. Like, it, I thought that match was not that good. Even it's hard for me to say because both, you know, Dean and Luke. Those put out great matches, but it just felt like this match wasn't great. I mean, I, I, I thought the match was was like fine. It was like it was what I thought a typical Luke Harper, uh, Dean Ambrose match was going to be. I was very surprised that Luke Harper um, actually won the match, got the pinfall on Dean Ambrose with the Dick Dick Lariat. I hate I hate that WWE. That's one of my little like. Uh, one of my little pet peeves I hate about WWE and their commentary is that they won't call it a lariat. They call it a clothesline. It's like, no, it's a fucking lariat. But that's just that's just me and one of my little little hatreds of WWE commentary and what they do. But I was surprised by that. But, you know, it's a typical match. There was uh, not interference, but, you know, Dean Ambrose was brawling with Harper on the outside and then attacked Bray Wyatt and then... Um, you know, Roman Reigns has a Superman punch on Bray Wyatt and was attacking him. But, uh, you know, just setting up the match uh, for SummerSlam where it's going to be Wyatt and Harper taking on Ambrose and Reigns. And let me let me ask you guys this. Um, who I, I have this funny feeling that there's going to be a heel turn at SummerSlam. Do you guys think that Roman Reigns turned to you? Or do you guys think the Ambrose turn heel, or do you guys think there's going to be no heel turn? If there's a heel turn, I'd say but, Dean Ambrose has to do it. Because uh, he's way more interesting to me as a heel. I mean, right now, I could care less about that guy. And if he goes heel, I think it would go a long way in maybe refreshing his character and maybe restoring people's faith in him because he loses all the time and I can't take him seriously. And I know people say that wins and losses don't matter, but I'm sorry, they do. Yeah. Um, if they do that, it would be Dean Ambrose, but I, I don't think no, no turn going to happen at SummerSlam. If anything, maybe we'll see Eric Rowan, come out and and maybe they'll pull them on a swerve because right now I get you we all think, you know, Roman and Dean Ambrose are gonna win that match. You know, the the last couple of times, you know, they swerve us on Bray Wyatt. Maybe one of us thought that Bray Wyatt was gonna lose to Ryback. Then I I know for sure last month we all thought Bray Wyatt was gonna lose to break the Norman Reigns. But no, we got Luke Harper interfering. What did at SummerSlam we were doing this we feeling the same way. Roman and Dean's going to win the match, but then, you know, they swerve us saying, okay, now they got fucking Eric Rowan interfering, and then now the Whites win. Something like that can happen again. But I, like, if I had to predict, I don't, or pick my, put my money on it, I'm, I'll say no turn. Yeah, you know, I'd, if anything, I'd have to go with what Nathan said. Because, you know, it seems like they're they're building up this whole storyline. It's like Ambrose was saying tonight that, you know, him and Reigns are, you know, actual brothers. Like, they know each other. And, you know, he said that Luke Harper would do anything for Bray Wyatt, but Bray Wyatt wouldn't do the same. So they don't have, like, that close connection. So, you know, that's what they keep building this whole feud on. Um so that's what kind of gave me the indication that there might be something fishy going on, but uh should be interesting to see what happens at SummerSlam. And I, I definitely think Dean Ambrose probably needs a heel turn because it's just like, he's kind of stuck in purgatory, uh, purgatory right now. You know, he's not really doing anything except for this. 
if this wasn't going on, he wouldn't be doing much. So I, I think a heel turn would kind of freshen things up for him. Um, and hopefully they would stop calling him the lunatic fringe. I'm so sick of that every oh. single week. There's if the, if he turns heel, they're going to do it more. Yeah, probably. And that whole thing now where uh, they they're like uh, yeah, the Ambrose Asylum and you know the lunatics out of the asylum. It's like shut the fuck up, my god. This is why characters get killed so easily because your fans watch the show and they're like, that is the corniest shit ever. Like, and, and then people wonder why, you know, guys don't get over it because the commentary kills them faster than they can rise up. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, we'll see what happens with all that. Um, they pretty much confirmed on SmackDown last week that uh, this match is going to happen, the tag team match between uh, the former Shield guys, you know, Roman Reigns and um, Dean Ambrose going against the White family at SummerSlam, so it's that's confirmed. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. All right. Um, and those three hours, they did show that by repeat, the video packages, showing the, the brawl from a few weeks ago, the fucking broken nose. Uh, promoting tough enough. They, they had a lot of that tonight in Raw. Um, I want to say let's go to the main event, but I'm trying to see if I'm missing anything. Um, I don't think I'm not. No other matches happen. Um, besides all that, I don't think we're missing anything. Um, but anyways, I guess we should go to the main event, which is um, which is oh, I actually. The the fucking um the fucking uh Miss T V. Daniel Bryan came out. Well you put on the Miss you the host of Miss T V. Daniel Bryan came out. Um a lot of people thought he was there to um promote his book, but I feel like it was more than that. Like he came out and you know, he didn't want to miss an episode of Raw with his home state of Seattle and putting over the Seahawks once again, which uh I don't think they're gonna make the Super Bowl, but oh well. <laughs> um, yeah, he just he just came out, and then uh, Miss was getting all pissed off. That, you know, people cheering for Daniel Bryan. You know, the yes, 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 no, 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 all this crap. And then, um, you know, he mentioned about Ryback. He should bust what he he did for for the title. And then um, Big Show came out. Then I don't know where the return. Of your inner sound champion right back from the staff section. So I believe they also announced the matches on, on the that match that was supposed to happen last month on Battleground. Now it's on at SummerSlam. So right back with the 10 year kind of title against both Miz and Big Show. So right back came out in clean house. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. And <coughs> that shows the return of right back. I'm sure Tom is excited to see right back back. <laughs> Um, I mean, couldn't care less. This whole the Intercontinental title is back in the fucking toilet. Fucking Daniel yeah. Bryan, Daniel Bryan can endorse Ryback and raise his hand all he wants. It's still pure shit. No one gives a shit about Ryback or the Miz. The Miz is only great on Tough Enough, and that's about it. No one gives a shit about the Miz otherwise, and no one gives a shit, of course, about the Big Show. So you have a pointless match. Now for a title that you started to build back up, but has now faded back into obscurity. Good job. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Um. I guess we should go talk about the main event, which it was um, Seth Rollins against um, Randy Orton, but but they hyped up the whole, you know, how he RKO'd. Rollins kind of WrestleMania, you know, from the reverse um, curb stop. I'm all surprised they show that, you know, even though they banned the curb stop. So, um, yeah, they they uh, they had that match again. We saw many of a Raw. Uh, once again, Randy Orton did a highlight again, a Hall of Fame highlight, RKO, which, you know, basically it's almost like the CM Punk thing, which um, he jumped off the rope and then 
did Randy Orton RKO'd him. Everybody thought he was going to win the match right there until Sheamus came out and cost the match. <laughs> then Sheamus then, looked like he was going to... Uh, Tom, you see something? I didn't say anything. Oh, okay, I'm tripping. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> it, it looked like um, Sheamus was trying to cash in the money in the bank while Seth Rollins was in the ground. But then uh, Randy Orton just RKO'd Sheamus and uh, looked like SummerSlam we're going to see a Sheamus versus Randy Orton match once again. Hopefully it's for the Randy Orton playing the bank match because there's no point having another Sheamus-Randy Orton match for nothing again. You know, that, there's no point in that. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, hell, we don't know if Sheamus even cleared a wrestle. I mean, we heard he had a concussion. Um I think a few days ago, but we don't know if he's even cleared to wrestle. Um, Once, but uh, anyways, what you guys thought of the match, uh, starting with uh, Tom? Yeah, I don't know what the whole deal with Sheamus is. Match was okay. You know, there were some good spots, good counters. Um, I knew ever everybody and their mother knew that Sheamus was going to interfere. Like, I, I, I could have seen it coming from a mile away. But, well, you know, Sheamus, uh, first of all, Sheamus attacks, you know, Seth Rollins and Orton and all that, and then he's going to cash the money in the bank. What in the fuck was taking the ref so long to cash in the money in the bank? What was taking him so long? Like, it literally took a minute. You know, Sheamus handed the, the briefcase to the ref, and he's like, I'm cashing it in. And the ref's, like, like, looking at him, like, are you sure? He's like, I'm cashing it in. And the ref's like, are you sure? Are you sure? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're cashing it in? And, it, like, and this, it was a back and forth. This Go always ahead. happens with um, Money in the Bank cash-in teases. And they're so – I hate I hate it whenever they do it. Because they make the guy that's trying to cash in look like an idiot. And that's exactly what Seamus looked like tonight when he was trying to do it because the ref was so confused, almost having a seizure. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's like, well, what do you think he's doing? He's giving you the briefcase. He's trying to cash it in, and it's just it made Seamus look like an idiot. I don't know. It makes the ref look more like an idiot, too, because it's like what is taking him so long just to ring the bell? And then when a pay-per-view comes around, you know, all of a sudden a ref will ring the bell within five seconds. And it's like, w- what's the ref's problem tonight on Raw? I, I, I hate that. I hate when they do those little teases and it takes the ref, like, a, a couple years to, to figure out what the guy's doing and then nothing happens because of it. You know, no bell rings or nothing. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, that was pretty much... Um raw but uh we'll see what happens next week hopefully we'll find out um about john cena's um uh, injury and 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 what somewhat but um yeah we'll we'll see what happens all right um for the meantime we're gonna take a little commercial break and as we come back uh we'll talk about um some triple a and maybe we'll talk about my my visit with the Q and A yesterday when I uh, met with Chris and Joseph um, about the future of Lucha Underground, uh, we might do that. But uh, I mean, tell, let's take a commercial break. What's up? This is the phenomenal AJ Styles down here in uh, LA, kicking it with the uh, PWG, busting my tail. Freaking great tournament, the bowl tournament is freaking amazing. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, everybody and anybody needs to listen to Wrestling Head Podcast. Hello, pro wrestling fans. This is pro wrestler Brian Kendrick. Thank you for listening to Wrestling Heads. This is Eli Everfly, and you're listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Fucking bullshit! Well, both skits and freaking Matt are not here, so I will just put it on. I just put that shit on. Usually they'll put that fucking shit on anyway. <laughs> but anyways, um, uh, maybe maybe freaking Nathan can help me out here because uh, 
we both watched this event last night um, on pay per view, which is uh, Triple A Triple Mania. Um, Nathan, let me ask you a question. What was your what you thought of the whole pay per view? Um, you know, I'm not gonna go and say it left a poor taste in my mouth. Um, because I knew what to expect with last year's Triple Mania. Um, I saw last year's Triple Mania 22 on YouTube eventually, and there was it was kind of like in the same vein where they had a lot of production issues throughout that show. And with Triple Mania 23, it was a nightmare to watch just because of the audio and everything that was going on with with the production side of things. I didn't think the wrestling was that bad. Um, there was a few matches I had problems with. Overall, I'd give the show like maybe a 7 or an 8 out of 10. I thought it was a pretty enjoyable experience. Um, but and this is coming from somebody who's watched AAA for like the past year. So, but if if I was a new fan and I just decided to order this pay-per-view on a whim, I would probably be pissed off that I wasted $30. But as, as it stands now, I'm not mad at all. Yeah, I mean, I felt the same way. Like, I feel like I was watching an eye pay-per-view. You know, when, when eye pay-per-views had their little arrows yeah. going on, like W, Ring of Honor, or Evolve. I pay per view and they, they you know they unfortunately they'll get some errors in there you know um, you forgot to mention that even uh, the Lucha Cup had some um, had some issues as well uh, if you remember that remember the, uh, the Lucha Cup they had both English and and Spanish commentary on at the same time at one point so yeah they had well, like, issues there. that to me wasn't a huge issue. It was just kind of a minor annoyance. Um, but yeah. the ongoing audio issues last night for this pay-per-view were kind of a drag to get through, and it was kind of hard to ignore. Um, but I will say this. Uh, we were ju- we just got done talking about Raw. I would rather listen to b- uh, buzzing and hissing on commentary than the commentary that we actually get on Raw. <laughs> but that's just me. Um, but, yeah, it's I don't know what their issues were. And like I said, they've had issues in the past with presenting Triple Mania. Um, if this was just an eye pay-per-view, I don't think it would have been a big deal. I think they would yeah. have been able to fix it because it was a national pay-per-view and it was their big breakthrough into the U.S. and the U.S. market and the Canadian market. I think you're gonna le- you're gonna have a lot of first time fans that might not give AAA their money again, and that really sucks. Yeah, yeah, it really sucks. But let's go and let's... To, and okay. especially you can't do this, especially because of what New Japan did. You know, with Wrestle Kingdom nine, people were raving about that show. People. You know, you gave people multiple chances to watch it. That was New Japan's first pay-per-view in the United States and Canada as well. It was the same deal that AAA was doing, available on all uh, pay-per-view providers, available everywhere. No issues, no nothing, because then the Global Force Wrestling probably worked, you know, day and night to make sure that nothing was going to screw this up, that it was going to be the matches that presented the show, and there was going to be nothing else to interfere with this. They should have taken a page out of Global Forces and New mm-hmm. Japan book with that. You know, and it's, you know, I, I understand sometimes, you know, audio issues will happen here and there, but for it to happen, from what I've heard, for 75% of the pay-per-view, that is, that is unexcusable. That is inexcusable. And, one of the things I saw when AAA issued their apology, um, and, you know, Court Bauer was all over Twitter, and he was, you know, telling fans that it was inexcusable and there's no excuse for this. So 
I definitely feel bad for a guy like Court Bauer because he definitely saw that he was trying his hardest to make sure that this was uh, going to come off as you know best as he as he can make it. But it, it, it's unexcusable, and saw no mention of refunds. I saw no mention of people getting their money back from this. And like I said, that's going to turn people off even more because it's like, all right, these to the people that wasted, you know, 30 bucks on the show and now you're not even going to get a refund because, you know, for whatever reason, that's definitely going to turn a lot of people away, not just from watching AAA on pay-per-view ever again, because I don't know if AAA will ever be on pay-per-view ever again after this whole thing, but it's going to, you know, deter people from watching the product as a whole. I think AAA will be on pay-per-view again because you have to realize that uh, ECW, when they first ran pay-per-views, their first couple pay-per-views were fucking disasters, and they were still able to figure everything out and but, ring of honor continuously has eye pay-per-view issues or at least they have in the past and people still give money to that so i think it's i don't think that's an issue of whether or not they get another pay-per-view i just think it's they need to figure out exactly what went wrong and how to fix it before they ever try to do this again yeah and another thing i want to mention um i didn't want to mention it now but all right um if you saw, heard the end of the show, Nathan, um, Matt Stryker said, tell your providers you want the you know, next event, which is Immortal Heroes, on October the 4th to be on pay-per-view. Um, yesterday, when I was at the freaking uh, Q&A, um, Kristen Joseph did mention that he got, he got ties with AAA, and he did mention that that's what they're planning to do. All their big shows, they're having, or they're going to they're gonna plan to put them on pay-per-view. So... If Immortal Heroes Please. comes to, it would not, it would not, it would surprise me. Um, one thing I was going to mention earlier when we, or when Matthew was talking about Triple Mania, we, I, yeah, I can't talk. Um, I ordered the show on pay per view, like traditional pay per view. I know that there was an i pay per view version available. I'm wondering if the iPay-per-view version had the same audio issues that the pay-per-view version had. Or if it was... Yeah, I, I'm assuming that's a good question. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm assuming it did because it's coming off the same feed. But, like, I've ordered... Um, I ordered the last um, AAA pay-per-view, or iPay-per-view before Triple Mania, which was Verano de Lucha, or no, Verano de Escalado. De Escalado yeah, Verano yeah, Escalado, and that yeah. one did not have very many audio issues. So I'm wondering if had yeah. people ordered it on the internet through internet pay per view, if it would have been a lot better of an experience. But like I said, I didn't order the i pay per view version, so I wouldn't know the answer to that question. Yeah, I mean. Possibly a lot of people might order it from the pay per view because it, it was going on English, and um, in case you know people don't understand Spanish, people would have just ordered the pay per view just to get an English commentary, which it it was it, it did suck, you know Matt Stryker and Hugo and all that. But oh well, I, I was interested to see how Hugo commented in English because I never heard him commentate in English. I always hear him in Spanish. So same here. Uh, and, yeah, and, and when he's in student in Spanish, he's, he's almost like Jim Ross. He's very, very into it, you know. I understand everything, um, what he says, but he's, I feel like he's very into it. He's into the match while, while he's commentating. Um, and he, he tries to do it in English as well. Like, he, he put out some good details. Like, like, look at the distance. Look what he does, this and that. Like, he gives out all the details. I mean, I like that. I mean, I give him props doing that in English, you know. Um yeah, same here. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's just start off with the match. It it opened up with pretty much like an, um, I want to say like an all star, but it just seems like they just put on these um these talents in in this match and this a, a eight person tag match, which was uh Draga teaming up with Mamba, Mini Psycho Clown, and Sexy Star against uh Destinia, Drago, Goga Kong, and um Pipi Linda. Esperada. Um, Tom, I'm sorry, not Tom. I'm Nathan. Let me ask you, what do you thought about the, about the opener? 
Um, I thought this was not a good choice for an opener. If it was me, I would have put picked something else uh, in its place and had this match go on second. I don't necessarily know which match I would have had open the show, but this match kind of, uh, really didn't work for me. Um, and like I said, if I'm a new fan and I'm looking at the show, I'm, I'd basically be watching it and saying, well, what the hell is this? You know what I mean? Because well, I don't know. I don't aren't... know. Well, I don't know because this match is like a match where you, you're going to see a lot of high flying and all that from the midgets, even the chicks too. You know, chicks you could start to fly off from the top rope as well and go outside the ring, you know? Yeah. Well, I thought it was a good match. I'm just saying like from a presentation perspective, like, because the exoticos are something that is going to throw people off. And, like, if I'm a casual viewer, if I just happen to turn this on, I'm going to say, well, what, what's going on here? Why should I watch this? But I thought the match as a whole was pretty good. Um, oh, listen, I just... Let's, let's ask Tom this. Like, Tom, if you did order this pay-per-view yesterday and you see an opener would involves midget women and a couple of high flyers, what, what would you be expecting in this match? Like, would you be down for it or would you be like, what the fuck is this? Like... You're not a you know casual AAA fan, but what will what, be your mindset looking forward to this match? I mean, coming from a wrestling standpoint, I would never ever start a wrestling show off with an eight man with an eight person tag. I guess you could say because yeah, that's that, where I'm coming from on this thing. It, it's way too complicated, you know. You know, I I hate to keep going back to New Japan and comparing it, but I think it's a good comparison because, you know, both these companies did their first pay-per-views in the United States and Canada this year. So I think it's a good comparison. You know, they started off, you know, their biggest show of the year with, you know, the Young Bucks taking on um, the Forever Hooligans, taking on Red Dragon um, for that WGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles. And, it, and it's a good opener also because a lot of the American audiences are going to watch that and be like, man, those are the Young Bucks. I hear people talking about them. It's a good way to kind of draw people in and keep them interested. And it wasn't too, it wasn't too messy. You know, eight people tag, they, they, they always get clunkered. You never, I, I don't think I've ever seen an eight man tag that wasn't, you know, so cluster fucked and so well, complicated. Especially yeah. in a lucha setting, when it's a oh, mess yeah. anyway, because there's no tags in and out for the most. Yeah, part. I, I like, like I said, I I've seen plenty of eight man tags in so many different companies, and it's 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 hard to enjoy them. You know, you you obviously they put this match together to put those people on the show, but it was just like I wouldn't have gone that route. Like I said, you you put eight-man tags kind of like the second or third match just to kind of like cool people off for a little bit before building them back up. And that's what you need to do with a wrestling show is you start off hot, you kind of cool down for the next couple matches, and then you build back up to the main event. You work your way back up, and the main event's supposed to be the height of the show, the height of people's excitement. You know, you wanna you wanna leave them on a on a kind of like a roller coaster ride, where the first match is the top of the hill, and then you kind of cool down, but then you go and you're doing all these different things. So, I wouldn't have done that. Um, obviously, maybe from a perspective, maybe they put it on first because you know they figured some of the American audiences would have recognized Sexy Star and Drago, so that would have uh, you know kept some people's interest. Um, but that's, you know, that's just my point of view from this whole thing. All right. Well, uh, let's get back, uh, to the match, shall we? Um, like I said, it was a lot of high flying stuff, freaking, um, Destiny and, um, mini psycho clown doing their thing, you know, running around. And, um, I, I was digging sexy stars in the match. She kind of had a little Batman or Batgirl look into it. Um, yeah, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome too. Um, you know what trips me? I thought with AAA, I mean, most of the talents come out with, like, I don't know how they got the music license because you you hear Sexy Star comes out with a song, a reggaeton song, which I heard ten years ago, 
I mean, it was a big song, I believe, during the time of Daddy Yankee and all those fuckers, you know, had their big hits. Yeah. Um, and then you have fucking Drago come out to, I think, Guns N' Roses, if I'm not mistaken. And then Yeah, and then you was, had, like, later yeah. on in the show, you had La Parca come out to uh, Michael Thriller Jackson. by Michael Jackson. Michael. And fucking Blue Demon come out to Red Hot Chili Peppers. So I'm like, what the hell is this, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I don't know how to get the license music, but they got it. <laughs> they, they came out with those entrance music, so... I don't know. It's, it's almost like an license. ECW feel to it as far as, like, the licenses for the music and stuff. But I'm yeah. wondering, like, if they were to distribute these shows on, like, if they were to put Triple Mania on, like, DVD and sell it in America, my guess is those most of those songs would have to be dubbed over. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And at the same time, you got to remember, um, Triple H did come out to Metallica at one point at 27. But um, and then they ruined one, it on the DVD. Yeah, and and even on the network as well. So, oh well. All right. Well, um, going back to the match, um, uh, this the uh, Drago and Goga Khan and Pipi Landa Sarala actually won the match. Um, Goga Khan actually um made um um Sexy Star tap out from the bow and arrow lock. Um, there were some people tweeted there was a, there were like tripping out that sexy star um tapped down the match. Like she's the one that got the you know, the fall. But I was trying to educate some people like if you're not familiar to Triple A, Sexy Star is a heel in Triple A. Exactly. So Yeah, and and then there's some people tripping out that like she's not the fucking tough girl you see in, in Luke Underground when she's out there going against guys like <laughs> Big Rick and she, that she she's a totally different character. She's just a fucking, and that's, I can say, almost like a total bitch in, in AAA, you know? And that's one thing, like, I'm glad, like, I, because when Lucha Underground was announced that it was going to debut last October, I, that's when I started watching um, AAA. I started watching it in June of last year to get more familiar with it, so that when AAA came, or when Lucha Underground came along, I kind of know the characters, and I know, I would know what to expect. But I was on a podcast earlier today, and I was explaining the show to somebody who had never seen or who didn't watch it and had, doesn't really pay attention to AAA all that much. But they do watch Lucha Underground, and I just told them, I said, well, if you look at it the way of Lucha Underground being a complete parallel universe to what AAA is, that's what you need to do. Because, I mean, uh, King Cuerno in... Lucha Underground isn't even the same guy in AAA, and, like, Sexy Star is a Technico in Lucha Underground. She's a Rudo in AAA, so it's, like, it's totally different. And people just need to realize that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. um, Next match, which which I have to mention, um, Chapasias. Um, it, it was like he's the famous headband referee from from Triple A. It, it was his last match um, as a referee, so he's a pretty much a lo- legendary referee that has been refereeing for a long time. I think he even re- re- refereed a couple times in WWE, which with WWE was bringing Mexican talent at one point in the nineties. So um, yeah, he was just celebrating his, his, his last referee match and. Um, and his referee match, his final referee match will be another, well, a farewell match to Villanos 3, which is the Villanos will be will going against the Cycle Circus, which Cycle Circus had an awesome entrance. I tweeted it, and AAA actually retweeted it. So it was pretty cool from AAA for doing that. And then um, this match, I expected to be like this. Like, it, it was slow-paced. The Villanos are, are old. So um, I expect them, and, and then Cycle Circus, you know, I, I expected to be a real slow place match, and I was right. But um, the Villanelles actually won the match via pinfall, and then um, and they Villanelles three and four decided to unmask, so they unmasked. Villanelles five just stepped away because he, he doesn't want to get unmasked. But out of respect, I guess Villanelles three and four they did take off their mask, and three is done. He just went on to retirement. 
And um, the Cycle Circus shook their hands and everything, and um, they had a big little celebration. But too bad it was – this match wasn't great. Like I, I like I expected, it was going to be a lot of slow plays due to the amount of age. Those guys are freaking old, and, and you know, what can I say, you know? <laughs> um, uh, Nathan, what do you thought about that match? Um, You know, going into it, I didn't really expect much, and it, I didn't really get much from the match. I knew – like, I've seen Viano 4 and Viano 5 in WCW when they were there for the time that they yeah. were there. And they were kind of just guys that were there and didn't do much um, impact-wise. I mean, they didn't really do anything big. And I respect the fact that they're, they're a family of uh, mass wrestlers, and it's cool that Viano 3 was able to go out the way he did. But I wasn't a huge fan of the match. Um, I thought it was pretty sloppy and it could have gone down a lot better, but I mean, good for Viano three for finally retiring. I think he's like in his sixties. So, and I think the other two are pretty old too. So, I mean, good for them. They got their last, or they got Viano three, got his last hurrah. So my hat's off to him. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I wish um, him the best, and probably he'll be um, a Triple A Hall of Famer. Like they did announce the uh, the Hall of Famer who they got in, they put in uh, Hector Garza and um, Pedro Wild. Pedro Wild, you know, um, they, they both passed away, and um, they did a little thing for both of them in honor of them. And yeah, they both got in the their version of the Triple A Hall of Fame. So hopefully uh, Leonardo three will get in pretty soon. All right. Um, next match for the AAA World Trios Championship in a in a cage ladder match or or in, almost in a cage match pretty much. It's like a cage match with um, it's like an Ultimate X match in a cage. That's how it was. Um, and it was a three three trios triple threat match type thing. Um, it, it was the Hell Brothers, which is um, Chapman, Rirano, and um, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, the partner's out of my mind. Um, what's his name? Um, uh, it was Averno, Cibernetico, and Chessman. Cibernetico, yeah, Cibernetico, yeah. For some reason, I had his name out of my mind, but Cibernetico and Rirano and uh, Chapman. They're all teaming up. They're, they're the champions. The Hell Brothers teaming up against uh, the tag team of. Uh, Jack Evans, Angelico and Phoenix, and um, and Pentagon Junior, um, Pentagon Junior, uh, Tecano and Ecos and Fantasma. And um, this match, I say, was the best match of the night. I mean, you got Jack Evans climbing up, and then they're, they're fucking throwing him down, and and then you have um, crazy ass. Um, Spots all over the fucking place from Angelico, Jack Evans, Phoenix, Pentagon, Hijo de Fantasma, all those guys doing them crazy, amazing stuff. Um, but the ending was stupid. It was terrible. The ending was okay. Angelico, uh, Hijo de Fantasma, and, and Verano, which they're all on set, three separate teams, right? They're all three was on top of the thing where like the Ultimate X type shit. Uh, by, nearby the belt, they they both kicked out on Helico out of the freaking thing. They made on Helico fell off, and then you have Hijo de Fantasma and helped out Irvano er, like getting close to the belt. He's up there posing because they're you know you know like he like he did something he used to shit or whatever. Then you fucking have Irvano kick him in the ball, push off um, <laughs> um, Hijo de Fantasma out, and then. Irvano was the only one up there. He got the, he got one of the belts, and that was it. The Hell Brothers retained the Trios Tag Belts, which that was really retarded. I think that was stupid. Yeah, that was a dumb. I, uh, the, I thought this match was really good. Um, like you said, I thought the finish was stupid. I yeah. think the cage really handicapped this match. If it would have happened without the cage, I think it would have been great. Yeah, but with the cage and the way that it did happen, I it was kind of like a middle of the road forgettable match, and that 
that finish, they did everything they could do. Um, but it just, in the end of the day, it just didn't work. And it made everybody involved look stupid, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, Borsi, the Hell Brothers are still your AAA um, Trios Tag Team Champions. Uh, we'll see what's next for these guys. I hope the cir- Cycle Circus will get back involved in the, of the of those tag team title scenes, but who knows? We'll see what happens. All right. Um, let's see. The next match, it was uh, Blue Demon Jr. and uh, Le Parc going against El, El Messias and Electroshock. Once again, um, actually, this match was actually better than I, I expected. I thought this was going to be another slow-paced match, but um, Le Parc and, and uh, Blue Demon, well, Blue Demon actually moved quicker than I saw in those shows at the Lucha Underground in this match. Um, I mean, they did a couple of things like uh, the, the Parker with a turtle war backbreaker out of Macias. Um, then you had a... Uh, they pretty much, I felt like the Parker and Blue Demon pretty much um, um, took over the match of these guys, even though in Macias and Extra Shot are pretty much younger than those two legendary guys. And the Parker could still move. He could still dance around like he did in WCW back in the day. Um, but it was pretty cool. I mean, I it was better than um, I, I expected. Um, and then uh, uh, and the Parker could still dive. He dives over um, on the Messias on the floor. Um, the Parker, I don't know how old is he, but he's still flying around. That's kind of crazy. But uh, is it, I have a question for you regarding the Parker. Is it the same La Parker that was in yeah. WCW, it, or is it the yep, different La Parker? Because, well, because I, for some reason, I got, I remember hearing a long time ago that La Parker is now a different guy, and that the original La Parker. Uh, that was in WCW is now goes by LA park. And that's why nah. I asked. Okay. Nah, I don't think so. LA park is, um, from CMLL, that guy, right? You talking about? Yeah. Nah, it's the same with Parker from uh, WCW. Bro. I, I don't believe okay. that at one point. LA park is some other dude. It's like almost, okay. he's like almost like a, um, how can I say this? Um, for all the like Lucha Libre guys, I don't want to, don't rub it the wrong way, but L.A. Park is almost like a freaking, um, almost like a parody of the Parker, but he's a little different. Maybe he's more like an evil the Parker, you know? That's I that's so I don't fun. know if that's the best way I can say it, but that's how he is. Um, but that that the Parker you saw in um last night in Triple is the same the Parker from WCW. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I know a lot of people are confused about that, so it was kind of like it was kind of piquing my curiosity of whether or not it was the same guy, because I remember um, there was a guy in like, well, the original La Parka in WCW supposedly changed his name to L.A. Park, and then went yeah, to you know what? And- hey, you know what? I'm actually getting a text. Um, someone's saying you're right, uh, Nathan. Someone, this is not the same La Parka from WCW. See, and that's what I thought. But yeah. I wasn't going to argue with you over the air because there's no point in doing that. All right. You know what? You could be right because someone's actually texting me, you, you know, you, you, you know, that Nathan guy is right. It's yeah, not the same the Parker from WCW. Yeah, because I could have sworn that it was a different guy because um, from what I remember happening, AAA got the rights to use Le, or got the rights to use Le, the La Parca name, and that's oh, okay. why the original La Parca L.A. Park changed his name. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, because look, he's telling me this happened to uh, Mista C's in CMLL. Like right now, CMLL they have a character of his old name, um, Mystico, Mystico, and he's still using it in CML right now. But when um, he left CMML. They kept the character mystical, and now somebody else is using that mystical name right now on CMML, and you have um, Mistasis using his name Mistasis, a different name. So yeah. that's basically the same thing happened, but the other way around with the park, but now he's L.A. Park. 
and his son okay, is the that's same. What I thought. The Parker Junior in Triple A, but now he's L A Park um and uh Junior in C N L. So okay, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah, it's another guy using the Laparka um character. Okay, okay. So I'm just checking that. I just I just thought that all right, I just thought that uh that was the same guy in W C W the whole time. All no, right, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. All right, well Blue Demon and Laparka won the match and uh yeah. That's uh that's there you go right there. All right. Then uh you had the hair versus hair match, which was uh um El Patron had Phoenix on his side, by the way, going against Brian Cage with Eco de Fantasma on the on his side. But um just to let you know um uh, people did not know that Brian Cage his entrance music was the same music uh you you hear in, in PWG if you guys go to those shows, but if you guys do not know, the same music you used last night is the same music you used at PWG. Um, I was going to say, yeah, Brian Cage had the nerve to come out with a vote for Trump shirt in Mexico. <laughs> that, that's like the total no-no there, because right now Mexico is calling for Donald Trump's head right now out there. Um but yeah, he came out with the balls, wearing that shirt, both for Trump, um, and he has uh, he called that Fantasma waving the American flag in the background. Um, th- this match was pretty good. It got a little brutal. Um, El Patron was actually busted open in the match. Um, it, it, they went all over the place um, between the two, and um, unfortunately. You know, there was also an interference on Eagle the Fantasma and um, and Phoenix, but unfortunately, El Patron uh, beat the arm bar, and um, Brian Cage lost the match, so he, he has to shave his head, and uh, he bald, and now he has my hair do. Um, um, they, what do you thought about that? Um, I thought it was good. Uh. When when I told you that this match was just a hair versus hair match and not um, yeah the title, I remember you were thrown off and like come to think about it, I was too because it's like if you are doing your best or your biggest show of the year and you're on U.S. paper U.S. and Canadian pay per view, you would think that the title would be on the line. Um, with that said, I have a feeling that since. El Patron won this match that they will probably end up having a rematch for the title um, where it's po- quite a possibility that Brian Cage could win because that to me seems where it's going unless this match was meant to be the blow off of the entire feud. And if it was, that's fine, but I don't know where both these guys will go after that. You yeah, know you mean? know what? It will make more sense if this is going the, for a third match and Brian Cage wins the title next time. Because if they have Brian Cage lose again to El Patron, this kind of makes Brian Cage look weak. I mean, I'll yeah. be confident if, if the, ne- and the next tapings Brian Cage goes nuts. Like, we, he has to change his character a bit. Like, kind of like his Lucha Underground character where he's a guy, he's like, he destroys people. I mean, not the whole Brian Cage you see in AAA, which he's rubbing the Mexicans around way with the fucking America thing, you know, Donald Trump, all that shit. He's happy to be American, screw Mexico, all that crap. He has to stop that and and become like a monster. And that that leads him to, I mean, that 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 would make me think, okay, he's gonna beat Patron and win the title. But if it leads to Brian uh, El Patron winning, it, this feud got to end. It's fucking retarded yeah. now. It's gone on way too long, and if the if the purpose of it is not for Brian Cage to come out with the belt at the end of it, and this is coming from somebody like I'll tell you right now, Alberto Al Patron is my favorite wrestler right now in all of wrestling. Um, but and he, but he's had the title since December. He's had it long enough, um, and I think it's time that he loses it. And I think the guy that he loses it to should be Brian Cage. And if they don't do that, then they've missed the ball on this entire 
feud. Because yeah, to me, and that's, like I said, that's where it's leading, and I thought it was going to happen at Triple Mania, but the title wasn't on the line, so there's no point. And now I'm wondering if they do the title change, where they're going to do, where they're going to do it, and how they're going to accomplish it. Hopefully, an immortal like, hero. Yeah, and like you said, if Brian Cage gets a rematch and loses again, he's going to look like a joke. Yeah, I know. Which he's not should be treated that way. But we'll see what happens. Um, so after the match, Brian Cage, after he got his head caught up, he tried to attack Patron, but then uh, he, uh, he, I guess uh, he freaking, I think it was uh, Patron, he powerbombed him, or he got helped out by Phoenix, and then it, they um, they put the Mexican flag over Cage, and the crowd went nuts because uh, that crowd don't like Cage at all. <laughs> all right, um the main event, which is the dream match, uh, everybody's talking about. Rey Mysterio Jr. going against Mr. Seas. Interesting, when Mr. Seas came out, he came out like Sting and Owen Hart, um, from the Raptors hanging down. Um, special interest, kind of like the whole Mission Impossible thing. Um, there's, and um, the crowd actually booed Mr. Seas. And um, yeah, they booed him. And then uh, I was a little shocked by that because he was one of their top baby faces. And then uh, Mr. Seas did not like it, and so he just showed the crowd and on fuck and all that crap. Then Ray Mysterio came out to his old WCW music, the Filthy Animal music. Um, if you all remember that, um, he came out to yeah. that. And then um, he had a he 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 had a new look. He came out almost like looking like Drago. He had wings and everything, um, but he had a crazy ass look, by the way. Um, this match it started off like pretty. It got a little pretty physical. Like it, they they fucking were going outside a lot. Uh, they used tables. I'm like, all this shit was in the beginning of the match. Like Jesus <coughs> Christ, it was it went it went physical. And there was a point where Mrs. C's trying to rip off the mask of Rey Mysterio. Um, Mrs. C's got hit, sorry, Rey nailed Mrs. C's on the on the pole. Mrs. C was bleeding. You could see the blood th- through the through his mask. Um, I mean, it 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 was the match was okay. Mrs. C's actually power bomb Rey to to the table, the English table, but um, but the table did not break. And then, um, <coughs> then more back in the ring, um, this is, this is, I hit with a turnbuckle on the bomb by Rey Mysterio. And then, uh, then finally you have Rey Mysterio winning the match, um, via submission though. And, uh, with La Mystica. And La Mystica, he yeah. Used, and, yeah, he used, uh, Mr. C's own finisher against them. He used his own finisher against uh, Mr. Seas, and uh, yeah, he gave up, and uh, Rey Mysterio won the match, and then interesting, you had um, Benton on Junior Arvado and Joan Leader came out and attacked both of them, and uh, and with the staple gun, and then Mr. Seas actually fought back, he took the staple gun from uh, Joan Leader, and he, and he used the staple gun all over them, and then um, Ray and... Um, Mr. Seas came on the ring, and then uh, I think Ray was trying to uh, um, oh, raise his hand, but then Mr. Seas just pretty much turned on him. He spit like something on his face, and he blinded Mysterio, and then he grabbed the mic and he just cussed out the fans, and he was disappointed by booing him and all this stuff. And then you got he has cheered for him, so he felt like he got betrayed by the fans because Ray Mysterio's returned to AAA. And then um, he attacked Ray outside the ring, and he challenges Ray for for a rematch, but this time mask versus mask. And then um, the feet got kind of cut, but I, I I don't know if you heard, Finn, but did Mrs. C's join that group with uh, Pentagon, Arano, and, and Joel Lito, the Brattles and Ma group? Did, did, did that happen? Um, From what I read, it did. But it just said that, like, a lot of people were pissed off because before we got to see it, that's when the pay-per-view cut out. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, that's but gotta... from what I saw and what I gathered after the show on Twitter with people's reactions, that's pretty much what happened. Um, because it wouldn't make any sense to me if he was a heel, if Mr. C's was just a heel without those guys, given that those guys were in the ring. Yeah, and what's tripping me out that, you know, Arano and Mr. C's are freaking are, are arch rivals. And it looks like Mr. C's is part of that group now. You know, that's the little group called Peros and Mal. And Conan's like a little manager there. And, um, yeah, so that's pretty much what happens in the end. He just betrays Rey Mysterio. Um, Nathan, what do you thought about that match in Rey and, uh, and Mr. C's? The dream match. Right? Um, about. That match, I think I liked it a little bit more than you did because that was the whole reason that I ordered the pay-per-view the last two matches were. And that match more than delivered for me. Um, it was, I wouldn't say it was the best match on the show, but it was probably my favorite just because my expectations were so high. And normally when my expectations are that high, I'm disappointed by being let down because the match didn't necessarily reach my ex- expectations. But for the billing that it was given, that it was a dream match and everything, I thought it was just fine. Um, the only issue that I may have had is that I thought that Rey Mysterio, if he was going to win, should have won with his own finisher bes- instead of Mr. Caesar's finisher. Um, but otherwise, I thought it was a fine match, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. So All right. I can't complain too much about it. And I know, like, I've I've read reports, I've read reviews about the show because I wanted to get an overall consensus about what people thought, and a lot of people either loved or hated that match. Yeah, I heard it was 50-50 between that, I mean, between the, that match, but, well, yeah, we'll see. But uh, we'll see if they get that rematch, um, match versus match, match. If anything, will happen part in Immortal Heroes on October 4th, and we'll see if that goes on pay-per-view. All right, well, let's take another commercial break, and uh, when we come back, I'm going to talk about the time I was in the Q&A with uh, Chris and Joseph of Lucha Underground. I'm going to explain what he said if he needs a periscope like yesterday, not like that, but yesterday, um, what he's, what's the future of Lucha, and then uh, maybe I'll give the thoughts to Tom and Nathan, what's their thoughts about it. All right, well, we'll be right back. This is Ring of Honor superstar Nigel McGuinness, and you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio Show. So stay tuned, you wankers. Hey, this is Ray Rosas. And PPA all day, the biggest man in professional wrestling, pretty Peter Avalon. And, and we are PP Ray. I love it. I love it. Got your voice is majestic. <laughs> and you are listening to Wrestling Heads. You got this one. Radio. Hey, this is Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, Red Dragon, Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion. We just happen to be the best tag team on planet Earth. And you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Yeah. Um. Welcome back to Wrestling Heads Radio. I got a little message for Skits, and here you go, man. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to put that for Skits and whenever he listens to this. <laughs> Shout out to Skits. I know he's watching that t- terrible Dodger game right now, but oh well. Um, all right. Last Yesterday, me and Skits were at the Wrestling Guy store, and we had a Q&A with Lucha Underground, Chris um, and Joseph. I, I wish I admit, I was a little disappointed because he, he's like, a, he's one of the head guys in Lucha Underground, and Still, he gave us no answer when season two will begin. He only says possibly um, in September, October, they'll start filming. But I was expecting maybe he'll give us a final answer, but it did not happen. But he came up with, with a couple of things. One, he's, he is planning to um, release action figures for the Lucha Underground, which would be pretty, pretty cool. Uh, two... The rumor about them moving to Texas is not true. They still want to have it here in L.A. Um, so 
I mean, the fan base and all that, it's still there. He still wants to bring in the fans for free. I mean, I mean, he he's not going to go that way from charging. He doesn't want to go that route. Um, he also meant that a couple of interesting stories, like when he was in the WWE, the original idea was seeing the Raw GM thing. The, the, it's supposed to be Triple H, but it never happened. Um, he did admit that the whole um, Vince Sun thing was supposed to be uh, Mr. Kennedy, but then Kennedy and Vince McMahon had some heat, and they changed it to Horn Swaggle instead. Um, and he did mention um, for season two, he is planning to bring in the Cycle Circus, but it won't be the same characters you see him in um, AAA, so he said they're going to tweak him out a bit, so maybe we'll see him as heels, probably, and Lucha Underground, maybe like badass heels out there. Um, but that's in, that's um, in playing main. Also, I mentioned to him about Rey Mysterio possibly coming to Lucha Underground because the end of the of you, the last episode, you notice the question mark thing. I I told him that I that's the same question mark I saw in one of his titles. Rey Mysterio coming and he had a look like uh, no, I'm not sure. I don't know. Like he had a. That he, he's like one of those looks like you you know it's he's coming he's just bullshitting you know <laughs> but uh, to come in season one but he's definitely gonna be there for season two or at least I would like to think so because that way the show gets more name value and more star power added to it yeah I think someone actually mentioned him if will he bring in Candice LeRae to Lucha Underground he said yeah why not he wouldn't he wouldn't mind. I'm not saying Candice LeRae is going to be there, but if she's interested, they're interested. So that's about it. But I, I want to know what your thoughts and thoughts like. There's still no answer yet of what one season two of Lucha Underground is going to start. I mean, I don't know. What's your guys' thoughts like? I know you guys want to see it, but some, coming out from a guy who's like in charge uh or one of the head guys of Lucha Underground still don't know the, you know, when they start coming. Like, like, what's your guys' thoughts of all that? I don't know. For me, ever since Ultima Lucha ended, um, you know, I know, like I said, everyone's been asking, you know, what's going on with season two. And, I believe uh, Eric Van uh, Wagman did an uh, AMA on Reddit, and of course everyone was asking about it. And he, you know, and he said that you know there's a 99% chance that Lucha Underground is going to come back from season two. But right now, how can you say that that's going to happen when? You know, the uh, LA Network can't sustain what Lucha Underground wants to do. Um, you know, also in that AMA, you know, people were talking about how Lucha Underground reportedly spent like $20 million. He said that wasn't true. Um, they said they did spend a lot of money, but not $20 million. Um, but we just, we don't know what's going to happen with Lucha Underground. Where is it going to go? Um you know, there were people on Twitter tweeting to Netflix uh, that Netflix should pick up Lucha Underground because that would definitely be a great outlet for Lucha Underground to provide on because you're reaching everybody. You're reaching people all across the world, and everybody even, can access Netflix. Even if they did that, the whole deal with Netflix, the thing I'm wondering about it is if they would broadcast season two live if they can even do that, or if it would, they would just agree to carry season one in full so that people with Netflix could basically get up to speed with everything that's happened on the show leading into season two. Or if it's just going to be like, because like I said, I don't even know if they, if Netflix is capable of doing live stream shows because I would rather, if they're going to do a season two, Netflix is fine, but I would rather watch the sh be able to watch the show live because then it has a more authentic feel to it versus on Netflix when you, like, 
my favorite thing about watching wrestling shows is live tweeting and watching the show with people on Twitter so that I can get people's reactions about, like, because I might feel one way about one thing. Somebody else might feel a completely different way, and that's, like, half the fun of it. Whereas if they are exclusively on Netflix, then we lose that whole social media and the interactivity, I guess, of the entire show. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, Netflix thing, it, it could be okay, I guess. I mean, I, I was also hearing rumors that, you know, maybe that what Global Force would do if they can't get a network deal. They might just do Netflix. Um, but we'll see. I feel like they're still going to put on El Rey for season two somehow, some way. I mean, I know it's kind of frustrating right now. They can't figure out what the deal, what the deal is or whatever, but... Yeah. Another thing um uh you mentioned that um someone asked Chris that how successful Lucha I mean Ultima Lucha was when the second one comes out, is there a possibility can you put that on pay per view or something? But he said that there's no plans to have Lucha on, on pay per view at all. If if anything they're planning to have Lucha Ultima Lucha two uh, on a um um, once again, like we just saw on El, El Rey Network, like they, they, they just can't see, um, you know, Lucha Underground as of right now doing any pay per views. But I don't know what you guys thought of that. Like, I mean, with all the success with Ultima Lucha, I mean, he got trending and everything like that. You know, do you guys have a problem from not putting it on pay per view? Do you guys feel like you deserve on pay per view? Like, what you guys thought of all that? Um. I mean, I don't have a problem with it not being on pay-per-view. You know, the way I, I've i liked, you know, being able to watch the Lucha Underground the way it is. Um, number one, because, you know, I, I enjoy watching it on TV from week to week and also because of Xfinity. Um, it's weird because it won't, like... It won't save on my TV, but if I go to, like, Xfinity.com, they get it up on their website pretty quickly um, on the El Rey Network's uh, little sub thing on Xfinity. So I like that, and I like just being able to watch it like that. So I, for Lucha Underground, like, I don't need a pay-per-view to, like, enjoy it or an iPay-per-view or something like that, I think. It's... And it's something that to produce a pay-per-view for what Lucha Underground does, it's pretty difficult because they're a television show. It's that that's what makes Lucha Underground so different and unique is the way they presented it and the way that it comes across. Could they do a pay-per-view and could it still come across the same? Of course, but I think people just like that whole feeling of the TV show mixed in with, uh, you know, all the great wrestling that uh, Lucha Underground did, so. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Nathan, you got a comment on that? Um, what was the question again? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. No, uh, no, asking about, when I asked, uh, someone asked Chris and Joseph about, like, if the lot of success of Ultima Lucha, will Ultima Lucha do be on pay-per-view? Like, should they go that route? But he answered saying they okay. don't believe they will go that route. They're just going to be the same thing, be on free TV. Like, did you feel like, should it be on pay-per-view or you don't mind being on free? Or what's your thoughts of all that? I'm fine with it being on free TV because if you're going to put it on, um, if you're going to put it on pay-per-view, I don't think you're going to get – you're not going to garner too many buys because not too many people are going to take a chance on it if they haven't, like – because some people are like, oh, I didn't see, like, this show or this show, so I'm not going to understand what's going on. So you might have some of those people that don't want to order it because they're not fully caught up, so they might not understand what's going on completely. So I think – Leaving it on the El Rey Network, if they're going to do a season two and they're going to have a Ultima Lucha two, um, they should do it the exact same way that they did it for season one. 
All right, all right. Well, um, um, I, was, I just wanted to add, the only thing I would try to do differently is maybe not – I don't know if it's, this is avoidable or if they can even do it, but Ultima Lucha, the tapings took place – um, a couple months prior to the airing of the actual show, and yeah. spoilers were all over the internet. And I'm wondering if there is a way, there is a way that they can prevent that from happening, so that people aren't spoiled going into it. I wasn't spoiled because I was able to avoid all that stuff, but not everybody was like me and was able to avoid it. Well, they tr- going through those tapings. Well, I mean, they try their hardest. You know, not to have someone take out their cell phones. Like, I remember dur- even like during the intermission, I was just like texting somebody. The, one of the security guards came to me and told me to put it away. I was like, dude, we're in intermission. I don't care. Put it away. Their fucking security guys are fucking like, they're fucking um, strict. I'll tell you that right now. They, they fucking get so mad. So it was like pretty much no phones, phones at all? Like, no, no phones, phones at all. Don't stick it out. They don't want no you pictures. You couldn't live no, tweet anything or anything? No, nothing, no, nothing, nothing, bro. They don't want to see no phones out there, or, or they'll kick you out. That's how it is out there. Wow. So, so if anything's gonna be spoiled, whoever's at the show has to have a real good memory, and then post up later on. That's how they do it out there. Okay. All right. We'll see what happens in Lucha Underground. I mean, there's all these rumors just came out today at Triple A. Negotiating with with El Rey, maybe putting Triple A on on the on the network, but we'll see. But if, if they ever come up with a deal, uh, holy shit, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> all right, um, we're gonna end the show pretty um, right right now. Um, I think it's time for give us our plugs. Um, anybody that's listening, thank you for listening to us. Um, either it's online right now, YouTube, iTunes, whatever, <laughs> Stitcher. Um, thanks for listening. Um, yeah, if you haven't, please follow Wrestling Heads on Twitter. Oh, you can do the same on Instagram and um, Periscope. We're on Periscope all the time. I, I post uh, the thing the other day when I was in IWL, and yes, I the young buck kicked a nine-year-old kid on Saturday night. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, just follow us on there. You can follow me at Sinister632 on Twitter, Instagram, and um, Periscope. You can follow me there. Um, check out wrestlingheads.com uh, for news. Um, and you can and read other people's blogs um, out there on our website. So you should, you should check it out. And also, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be uh, we'll be coming back on Thursday um, for a show. We'll see what happens. Uh, what on Thursday? Maybe something we'll be talking about. So you don't want to miss Thursday's show. Um, the show you really should not miss on on the twentieth, which uh, we do we have a big show with um with Biff Busick on there. It's, we're gonna have an early time on um I believe it's gonna be nine p.m. Eastern time, six p.m. West Coast time. Uh, we're gonna have a big show leading to previewing Bola, uh, which Biff Busick's gonna join us. So you don't want to miss that out. And um, yeah. Uh, like I said, you can follow me at Sinister Six Thirty Two and those uh, Sinister Mini Act. And uh, yeah, uh, I think. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Yep, you can follow me on Twitter at to tweet me. I believe that's it's the same thing for my Periscope, even though the rarely Periscope, but I made this weekend uh, for something. I'm not sure yet, so I don't want to spoil it. Um, make sure you guys are. Of course, check out everybody else on uh, on the Elite Podcast Network, which you can follow at Elite Podcast Net. Um, tomorrow, Indie Power Rankings come on live, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. And they also come on Wednesday, 3 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Pacific. So two big shows uh, from the Indie Power Rankings coming up. Of course, the Tag Team Top 5 reveal coming Wednesday. So make sure you guys are checking that out. Um, Uncle Mike and Tom show is, they're going to be dropping uh, a new show Thursday probably the same day as, I don't know when exactly but probably sometime before Wrestling Heads goes live on the air so uh, make sure you check them out Beyond the Three Count um, and of course 
Eyes on the Ring, which Nathan will get to. And make sure you guys are going and checking out as much uh, as much alternative as wrestling as uh, as you can, you know, because we've been talking about AAA and Lucha Underground, I think, a lot tonight. And it's always important to go out, check out the indies, you know, whatever whatever you do, ROHWrestling.com. Ring of Honor's got a bunch of big stuff coming up. Um, they have another pay-per-view, you know, coming up in September, which, you know, we're, we're obviously going to be talking a lot about once it gets closer, but they have their big show, uh, Field of Honor next week, which we'll probably talk about as well. Um, SmartMarkVideo.com, HighSpots.com, AAW just released an, uh, a streaming service as well, and they are offering it with a special code if you go to their Twitter at AAW Wrestling, four ninety nine a month. So you get that for a couple months. So five bucks a month. AAW, you know, they've been putting on great shows for years, from what I've heard. You know, guys like. Uh, Seth Rollins and everybody who's come from there and even their shows today I've heard are really good so make sure you're checking that out and I'll pass it on to Nathan and he can talk more about Eyes on the Ring because uh, what what was up in the show yesterday man? Um, I don't know I just got a I just got a tweet from True God Immortal saying that there was no show last night. Um, so I don't know what the full deal and full story of that was. Um, he might have just not have been able to do it. We are planning to possibly reconvene on Friday night. So, And if that is the case, I am working. So I will probably not be able to be on. I'll be able to be on the show, but it won't be right away per the usual. So Because i got to get home first and then eat something, and then I'll probably call in and then just do whatever. But, um, so yeah, we had no show this Sunday. We're hoping to do one on Friday. If we don't do one on Friday, then it's just, we skip a week and then we go to, um, next Sunday. Um, but you can follow me on Twitter at headliner five, of course, go to eyes on the ring.com. Follow eyes on the ring on Twitter at eyes on the ring and just, uh, keep in line with what Eyes on the Ring is doing, what Wrestling Heads is doing, and just make sure to catch everything that everyone from the Elite Podcast is doing, or the Elite Podcast Network is doing, because we put out stuff like no other, and you won't get the coverage that you get from us anywhere else. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys. um, I guess until Thursday, we are out. All right. Peace.